recently, I watched Fast X. This is the 10th installment in the Fast and the Furious franchise, uh, unless you count, like, Tokyo Drift and uh, Fast and the Furious Presents Shobbs and Ha. Hobbs and Shaw, not Shobbs and Haw. What was I thinking? Either way, if you don't count those, this is the 10th installment in the franchise. Otherwise, it's like number 12. Way I digress. This movie was fucking dog shit. It was absolute hell to get through. The only redeeming factor was Jason Momoa. That's my main thoughts. If you don't like it, click off. Bye bye. You know what I mean? That's how I feel about it. And we all know that Fast 7 was like one of the best ones, if not the best one, and definitely the last good one. But anyway, I digress. So now I need to talk about one of the first things that I'm just lost on. So you guys, please help me figure this out. So basically, in this film, there is uh, a kid, right? And that kid's name is Little Brian, and it is the son of Dom. Now, this kid is at least half black, okay? Now, in my mind, I'm like, well, wait a minute. Uh, no, well, that doesn't make sense. Vin Diesel's clearly a white man. And obviously, he, like, fucked uh, with a Hispanic woman, which is cool, uh, based. Uh, and, and that's all cool. Now, here's the thing, though. I forgot Vin Diesel was black, right? Vin Diesel had a black father. Well, so that was like, I was like, cool, I'm not even going to bring this up. That all makes sense. Fuck it. He's got a black dad. Fuck it. Then I find out apparently the, the black father of Vin Diesel is his adoptive father. Based again, by the way. But like, now I'm confused. Is Vin Diesel black or is he white? It seems like nobody knows. Digress once again. This is the first time I've had to digress multiple times in one video. Anyway, I'm going to just take it with a grain of salt that maybe he that he probably is black like he's probably part black and and let's just explain it away like that you i don't want to shit on this kid whether vin diesel is black or not does not take away from like this kid was also one of the best parts of the movie alongside uh, like jason momoa's character the kid just brought a lot of like fun and lightheartedness to it and i don't know there was just something really heartwarming about this crime family just like being together doing crimes i, I don't know maybe that's just me oh i do have to say vin puts this child in so many dangerous positions like i think even a contortionist wouldn't be down to do this shit this thing's in the trailer so it's not a spoiler so i'm just gonna tell you but there's a scene where basically vin has the kid in car seat next to it okay drives it off of a fucking hoover dam and does it uses the Hoover Dam as a ramp was absurd. It was ridiculous. And honestly, it's kind of what I want from these movies. Don't get me wrong. I don't like it that he puts his kid in so much danger and is like really flagrant about it. But like, this is what I come to see these movies for. Just some stupid shit that they don't try to over explain with sciencey shit like when they went to space and stuff. No, just something simple, stupid and fucking dope looking that's what i want for this was one of the main and only moments that i really got that another thing is like uh this is also shown in the trailer so it's not a spoiler but basically letty beats the shit out of charlie's the roan base scene loved seeing that i saw it in the trailer and i was waiting the entire movie for that to come up because i knew it was going to be fun these are the highlights now the main thing too is as i said jason momoa's character is a highlight that is because he really seems like he just had a lot of fun with it although i will have to say his character is really poorly written basically half of the time he's like standing near buttons just like threatening people waiting to press them and watch explosions take place which hey i love explosions as much as this guy but i, I it just felt really out of place and not very menacing the place that i actually felt momoa uh it was like the most menacing even though he was the most outside of his like comfort zone was there uh like this race scene between uh momoa and dom that was pretty good moa really like takes the reins here and just does not give a fuck about any of the like threats that are being thrown his way so that that felt really cool and made the character really feel like more threatening because throughout this film he really doesn't seem that threatening he seems more like fun and whatnot until you get these types of scenes there's another scene where like dom is just punching bro dead in the face and he's like fine like laughing it off so that's what i liked now let's get to what i did not like dialogue here 
is absolutely atrocious. I don't know if the dialogue was always this bad, but holy fuck is it bad. Jason Momoa was doing the meme to Dom about family. Like, literally, Jason Momoa goes, you're the family guy, right? Or, like, fucking, because he's Peter Griffin, you know? Like, just makes general calls uh, to the audience, I would say, uh, or just to Dom, about how he's, like, this family dude. And the reason it feels like it is coming, like, more towards the audience is because that is a meme. Like, the family meme is one of the biggest from Fast and the Furious. And so, it was really weird that he just kept, like, hammering down on, like, yeah, I know how much you love family i know how much you love family top of that there was this really fucking bad intro there's 20 minutes at the start of the movie that is basically just a like thank you and fan service to all of the audience basically we have like the traditional like sit down for dinner out in the backyard after dad's done working on cars scene that we usually get in these fast and the furious movies usually they come at the end rather than the beginning however i don't mind that it happened at the start however this whole first 20 minutes felt entirely unnecessary it caught us up a little bit on what everybody was doing, but we had a decent idea of where everybody was at after the last film, so it really wasn't adding all that much new information, and it went through and it showed a bunch of scenes from previous movies that definitely felt like they were just like, hey, hey guys, do you know this thing? This thing happened? Top of that, Charlize Theron has to like work with Dom, which is one of these fucking overdone tropes these days of where like, oh, my enemy is so bad, I have to work with my other enemy who's less bad. Even though like Charlize Theron was like actively like playfully fucking over Dom multiple times in the past it just didn't make sense John Cena's character was here and I'm not gonna lie John Cena was one of the best parts of the movie I'll have to say it D Brie Larson is here and I, I like Brie Larson in some things I'm not like a Brie Larson hater like some people are but generally speaking she did not add anything to the film whatsoever so we get this kind of kickoff where we get this 20 minute intro and then it turns out that there's like some demonic force that the government needs to get this fucking criminal crew together for like the suicide squad charlie's Theron also is pushing for dom to fight against this dude also they revisit a bunch of old scenes from old movies in order to kind of add on to them in new ways now previously it was thought that like brian would be kind of brought back uh, via cgi to kind of do new scenes for the film and whatnot or to do like new scenes that have to do with old plot lines however we really didn't get that much here like they kept kind of teasing uh like paul walker and whatnot but we never really fully get it other than some old scenes again these old scenes just felt like fan service and if you've seen all these movies we don't really need you to go back over it you can kind of just kick into the real villain that we currently have oh, look i'm eight minutes deep it's never taken me eight minutes to get through a non-spoiler review but that's my non-spoiler review now i'm gonna be talking about like harsh spoilers so if you don't want harsh spoilers please go ahead and click off. Okay, so basically, Dante Reyes in this movie is both supposed to be extremely stupid and one of the most big brain motherfuckers we've ever seen. The way his character acts is that of someone who you would think to be kind of slow and acts in a very childlike way. However, he somehow does crazy things like turning Cypher, aka Charlize Theron's crew, against her, and then on top of that, manages to trick Dom and the entire crew into coming to Rome so that way he can explode them. And he does it under the guise of like being a government asking these people for help and all this other fucking stupid shit that somehow works. And then he manages to frame Dom and the crew who previously had diplomatic immunity and then manages to make the whole world think that they were trying to blow up the Vatican. Even though they've helped several governments, several times luckily though i don't know if you remember mr nobody from the past couple movies he had this whole god's eye thing that allows like anybody to see any stoplight in the world pretty much he was like this ultra rich dude who had super heavy ties to the government and shit well luckily his daughter is alive he's dead though but his daughter is alive and hey she has access to god's eye and all of her father's previous shit and she believes the crew so you'd think maybe she can talk to the government and kind of help Dom plead his case but no instead of that she just uses God's eye to locate Dante who was in Rio de Janeiro and then he has uh, the gall to like say hey 
Dante, let's race. Because Dante has really shown himself to be a true gentleman of the streets so far. You know, Dante agrees. And then we get the fact that, like, Dante planted bombs on the other two cars that were racing, which were, like, Dom's friend's cars that, uh, you know, his friends were the ones racing. You no, know, just more shit to make you understand that this guy's really a bad guy, you know? Then we get the fact that, uh, basically, the Shaw brothers from before are needed in order to help Dom. So they go to Deckard Shaw for help. Now, Shaw, being a terrible guy, is like, no, I won't help. But then randomly just decides to because, like, his mom has been helping them and is now also a fugitive. And this sends them on a path to be helped by another person who turns them into the authorities. Now, during this whole process, Dante, like, will go and do random shit to either attempt to kill Dom or his friends and just like slowly take out all of his family members and on top of that just do shit to make his life very uncomfortable or just not very livable like like making various governments wanting to capture him so that probably would have been preferred over fighting Dante so for example after they get turned in by this like bunk dude uh basically uh Jacob aka John Cena's character comes in and he like rams uh, the mercenaries in order to save the day but sacrificing himself in the meantime which really sucks because one i've had to skim over a lot of shit up until this point but john cena had been shown a couple times earlier in the film like one time he was there saving little uh little brian and whatnot or little b which was pretty dope and so generally speaking like i really like john cena here and for him to die there was kind of sad again i've had to skim over so many things from characters to story beats like like, there's just so much jammed into this movie that none of it actually feels impactful. You kind of just skip from one scene to the next while Dante does various things, like I said, to make Dom's life uncomfortable. And all of it happens so fast that it just doesn't feel like it means anything. And the stuff that does happen and the longer scenes that do take place are always just like the racing scenes or action scenes. You never get any character building or story buildup whatsoever. Just kind of introduce and make characters leave just willy-nilly as they see fit. I feel like they forgot some of the characters halfway through writing the movie, actually. Finally, we get, like, another betrayal of Dom by this character named Ames. Again, I, important, but I'm not going to. It's just, it's happened so fast. Is it really important? You know what I mean? Uh, and then we find out that, like, Lenny and Cypher, they escape the prison that they were fighting in, and it turns out they're in Antarctica. Dom drives his car off of the Hoover fucking dam. Um, uh, and uh, Letty and Cypher get uh, rescued by Giselle. If you don't remember who Giselle is, Giselle is Gal Gadot. She was a huge part of the Fast and the Furious series for a bit. However, her character fucking died. The death of Giselle was like a super important st uh, story beat for Han. So that's just really weird. Real shit. I'm not going to lie. I'm keeping like Wikipedia and IMBD up to try to like remember these story beats because there's just so fucking many pieces to this movie. They don't mention Queenie or Han here. Those are two pretty important characters. It's not like Han wasn't in this movie. Anyway, so that's where we get the fast saga left at. The entire crew is separated. They have to find their way back to each other. Some people are dead. And we get a post credit scene showing The Rock as Hobbs. And uh, that's that's pretty much that. Best things about the first Fast and the Furious movies were just the fact that they were so simplistic, but also fun. And they show like this cool subculture of street racing that unless you were a part of it, nobody really got to know. But now they've turned into, like, rather than some, like, drama slash family movie slash, like, uh, teen movie that's about, like, cool stuff and, and, like, character building and almost coming of age style stories to now just being about secret agents. That's all it's ever been since, like, Fast and the Furious, I don't know, 5. It's just consistently about pretty much like James Bond type shit, except almost to the point of parody. Uh, I'm not going to like go in and even do an outro for you on this one, guys. I, that's all I have to say. Go ahead and uh, do with that what you fucking will.
so big.